Darth Cheney is back, and this time he's defending torture. So let's put Dick on the rack of today's Off the Grid. Five deferment Dick is back in the saddle, standing up for the little guy, his old pal, the waterboard. So today on Off the Grid, I want to run down the life and crimes of Dick Cheney. When you pick up the dictionary and you see the word chicken hawk, there's a photo of Dick Cheney right there. Chicken, chicken hawk. hawk. Five deferments, yet he heads the Department of Defense, he takes us to war, he advocates torture. All these things Dick will do, but Dick won't do them, will he? Someone else will do them. Dick Cheney, a man who leads from the rear. There's a difference, you know, between leading from the rear and leading from the front. Dick specializes in leading from the rear. Anyway, Alex, fire away. All right, he has been defending torture. In March, Dick Cheney visited American University in Washington, D.C. to lie, lie, and lie some more. Despite a Senate Intelligence Committee's findings that the CIA misled the government in public about the brutality of its methods and the significance of their results, Dick Cheney defended the enhanced interrogation program succinctly with, if I would have to do it all over again, I would. American University students marched out of the speech at one point, calling out war criminal as they left. He then told the university's ATV, some people call it torture, it wasn't torture. Well, you know firsthand, Jesse, is waterboarding torture? Well, let me look right into the camera and say, Dick Cheney, how the hell would you know? How the hell do you even have an opinion on it, Dick Cheney? You couldn't even go to boot camp. You wouldn't even be successful there. And they don't torture you per se at boot camp. They just change you from a civilian to military way of thinking. And they do it pretty quickly and they do it pretty forcefully. But I went through something, Dick. It was called SEER school. Survive, escape, resistance, and evasion. And at that school, I was waterboarded, Dick Cheney. Not only did I go through boot camp, I went through SEER school. I went through Army Airborne school. I went through SEAL cadre, SBI, Advanced Guerrilla Warfare school. But I also went through what's called BUDS, Dick. Basic Underwater Demolition Slash SEAL Training. The most difficult training in the United States military, bar none. And guess what, Dick? This former frog man is looking at you, you chicken hawk. And I'm telling you, waterboard is torture, Dick. I was a competitive swimmer, Dick. I know how to swim. I'm used to the water. I'm a frog man, Dick. I've been in the water probably longer you know, three weeks than the amount of time you've showered in your life, Dick. What the hell would you know about the definition of torture, Dick Cheney? You're a guy who, when it was your time to go to the front, to show what you had, to stand up for your country, you ran and hid. And now you come back, the chicken hawk you are, and you're gonna define what torture is? You're gonna tell us who went in the military, guys who went to SEER school, guys who unfortunately became POWs. Dick Cheney, you're gonna define torture? That's bullshit, Dick Cheney. Just like you, you're bullshit. Go ahead. Well, the Senate Intelligence Committee's 6,300-page report also found that one terrorism suspect was repeatedly dunked in ice water at a detention site in Afghanistan. Do you think repeatedly dunking people in ice water violates the 1949 United Nations Geneva Conventions Article 3 when it states, the following acts are and shall remain prohibited at any time and in any place whatsoever. Violence to life and person, in particular murder of all kinds, mutilation, cruel treatment, and torture. You know what? I'll bet you Dick Cheney ain't even got guts enough to take a cold shower, let alone dip his fat little ass in ice water all night long. Here's a guy that didn't do nothing, never put himself on the line, and we as a country are gonna follow this leader from the rear, and we're gonna let him define what torture is? How would he have any clue what torture was? What did he ever do to put himself in a position to feel pain? Oh, that's right. Dick is a great hunter. He shot a guy on a hunting trip. That's right. Maybe if Dick, if you'd have gone in the military, guess what? They'd have taught you how to use that weapon and that guy wouldn't have got shot. But the world that Dick Cheney lives in, that guy apologized to him. Unbelievable. Unbelievable.
Alex. Cheney also claimed that the results speak for themselves, but according to the Senate Intelligence Committee's report, detainees had already surrendered critical pieces of intelligence before they were subjected to harsh techniques. As one US official briefed on the report put it, the CIA described its program repeatedly, both to the Department of Justice and eventually to Congress, as getting unique, otherwise unattainable intelligence that helped disrupt terrorist plots and save thousands of lives. Was that actually true? The answer is no. Governor, you know, can, can you name wait, a Wait a minute, Alex, oh. wait a minute, Alex. What about us standing for something? What is this, Dick Cheney's telling us all's fair in love and war, this veteran, this guy who puts his ass on the line. We as the United States are supposed to stand for something. We're supposed to stand for a constitution and a bill of rights and to be above what other people do. I guess in Dick Cheney's case, it's win and who cares how. And if the program was truly successful like they claimed, don't you think they'd be trumpeting their, su their specific successes oh, or at least one single success? Absolutely they would be. If they learn something, then they, Dick Cheney be out there shoving it in all of our faces saying, na 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 I was right, I was right. But you know what? He still wouldn't be right. There's something called honor, and there's something called human dignity. And people with honor and human dignity don't torture people. Well, it wasn't just for the love of it that Cheney supported the enhanced interrogation program. He was actually making big bucks off keeping the war machine rolling, of course. Reader Supported News reports that Halliburton received $39.5 billion in Iraq-related contracts over the past decade, with many of the deals given without any bidding from competing firms, such as the $568 million contract renewal in 2010 to provide housing, meals, water, and bathroom services to soldiers, a deal that led to a Justice Department lawsuit over alleged kickbacks. Cheney served as CEO of Halliburton from 1995 to 2000 when he retired to run for vice president with a severance package of $36 million. Only $36 million doesn't dick Wait, to... wait, 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 wait. He got a severance package after about five or seven years of $36 million bucks? He did, and furthermore, he was let out of his contract even though he was too young to qualify for early retirement under the specific terms of his contract. Am I barking in the wind? Does this sound like payola to go to war? He gets this big payoff, becomes the vice president, owns stock in Halliburton, takes us all to war, Halliburton stock goes up 3,000% or whatever it does, and Dick Cheney becomes even wealthier. By the way, let's remember, Halliburton changed their name. Years ago, they were called, let me think now, Brown, Brown and Root or something like that, because you know why? They got a billion dollars for dredging Cameron Bay in Vietnam. Well, they wouldn't want the public to think that all they do is profit at war. Somewhere along the line, they change their name so that we can't associate Halliburton directly with Vietnam unless you actually do your homework. I mean, how much more filthy can it get to have a vice president who takes payola from a company and then leads us into war so that he and that company can make profit all while his ass is never on the line, is it? And most people also assume that Halliburton flourished under Cheney's iron-fisted rule, but according to a report by The Guardian, the company had to pay out $2.8 billion in cash after a company Cheney purchased, Dresser Industries, had an asbestos problem that caused Halliburton stock to plunge from $25 a share to just seven. Despite Dresser's bankruptcy costing Halliburton billions, Cheney received $12.5 million in salary in the five years he worked there and left the company with $39 million in stock options. As I mentioned before, the early retirement he was awarded even though it was against his contract. Furthermore, Cheney's Halliburton stock options rose from $241,498,000 in 2004 to over $8 million in 2005, an increase of more than 3,000%. All because he orchestrated a war. People of America, when are you going to wake up? When are the United States people going to wake up? And now you think that going back to the Republicans is the answer? That's all I'm hearing about up there now. Oh, it's going to be Republican-led. Don't you remember what Cheney and Bush did a mere 15 years ago? 12 years ago? The economy was flourishing. We all had money. I was giving back rebates in Minnesota. Thousands of dollars to individuals in rebate tax returns. Then along come the Republicans and the economy goes in the tank. We get involved in two wars. And I'll never forget saying to my wife as the election of 2008 came along, 
I wouldn't want to be this president for nothing. And don't get me wrong, I don't like Barack Obama either. But I said that I wouldn't want to be this president because this president is going to get blamed for everything Bush and Cheney did. And sure enough, I'm a prophet. It's true. Now the question is, when are you people in the United States going to take your heads out of your asses and start paying attention to what's going on in your lives and what your government's doing when you got people like Dick Cheney out there who are portrayed as heroes. This guy is hardly a hero. And do you think Dick Cheney will see the inside of a courtroom for any of this? Absolutely not. Are you kidding? The protection that these parties give to each other, look what happens every time there's a new president. What's the first thing uttered? Do they go back and check out if they tortured and committed war crimes? Absolutely not. It's time to move forward. It's time to put all those things my predecessor did, all the breaking of the law, and move forward. Because you want to know what they're telling you he's not saying there? Because we're going to break the law too, so the guy that comes after us has to tell you to move forward too. They are all a bunch of criminals. My dad told me that when I was a teenager. He said all politicians are crooks. My dad was right. And you want to know? I'll give you the definition from my dad, because they spend a million dollars for a job that only pays a hundred grand. And what would an off-the-grid episode about Dick Cheney be without hearing from our vigilant viewers? For this edition of From the People, we asked your fans what they thought Dick Cheney's greatest offense is, and here are their responses. At Kitchen Witch on Twitter says, not sure, but the greatest thing Bush did was not to die in office. <laughs> Well, that's one way to look at it. You know what, though? That didn't matter, because Cheney was running the office anyway. You notice when 9-11 happened, George Bush was down in Florida with the kindergartners. Cheney was in the command bunker getting the report, the plane's 20 minutes out, the plane's 10 minutes out. Do those orders still stand, Mr. Vice President? And the Vice President snaps around and says, of course those orders still stand. Have you heard anything contrary? What orders were those, Dick? We never did learn about them, did we? What those orders were. At WY Veteran on Twitter says, his greatest offense was push W into the Iraq war, though W didn't need much convincing. Dick just fed BS and played him like a violin. Oh, without a doubt. W was uh, the perfect little violin. And lastly, at Bryant Burns one on Twitter says, Dick's greatest offense was being born. Oh, that's pretty heavy, man. I can't say nothing about that. I won't blame his mom and dad. I have nothing against Dick's mother and father, only Dick. I guess that's all the torture I can take from Cheney this week. Now it's up to you, my vigilant viewers, to keep the conversation going online. Tweet, message, and call me at the sites below. And as always, stay vigilant, find Cheney, and waterboard him. <laughs>